What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. In the last episode, we went and resurrected a 1964 Caterpillar D8H bulldozer. And man, was I excited to see that thing pop off for the first time in 15 years. If you haven't seen that video already, the link is down in the description. You might want to check that out before we get too far into this one, but we're going to have a lot of fun either way. So let's fire up the old auto car and go save a D8. It is moving day here. Got my buddy from Scrappy Industries back again today. He brought his low boy trailer. Man, I need to get one of these things. But we are gonna be getting the old D8 out of here.
the easy part. Now we gotta hope we can get this thing running today. It is a lot colder than the last time we were down here. All right, so things got a little chaotic the last time we were here. We had a bunch of people and uh, we were able to get it running quick, but that uh, makes it a little harder to accurately document what was going on there. So pony motor full of water, somehow managed to get it running and it wasn't damaged. Uh, carburetor linkages, none of them are connected. We're all just running everything by hand, no governor control. The starter, you have to wedge a pry bar behind it so that it engages the, the, uh, the pony motor uh, flywheel to get that to turn over. So there's uh, so a lot of things going on here. So you made it even more difficult to document. And I think that's about it. It ran pretty good. And other than that, the turbo sounds like it's going out of it. It sounds like it's hitting the housing upon first startup and uh, spin down. So yeah, she definitely needs some love, but I think we got a solid contender for a resto here. Hopefully we can get this thing fired up and loaded up. You know, well, no, you, you probably want to put this down to idle, Matt. I think you had it full throttle. I was kind of in the middle. Okay, they seem to like idle to start for whatever reason. I pulled that choke back. Okay. I was just doing it with my hands. Oh, we got gas soaking down in there, so go ahead. I probably could just open the throttle and put it in there. It's a lot of choke. It's not like I'm helping shit up there. Give her. So at this point it's a little hard to tell what's going on there but basically Sam is up on the operator's platform operating the compression release and the throttle for the diesel engine as well as engaging the pony motor to the diesel to get it spinning over. I'm down on the side there acting as the governor slash throttle since none of that stuff is really operational at this time. Now what should happen here is we should engage the pony motor to the diesel, it spins over, you uh engage the compression and then give it some fuel and it should just pop right off since we had it running recently we thought this was going to be an easy task but what we're finding here is that we're just cranking and cranking and cranking and this thing is just really close to firing but not firing and uh, I'm gonna have to cut a lot of this footage out of here because it's like an hour of us just cranking this thing over for forever but uh, we'll explain uh, what happened and what was keeping it from starting up
All right, well, this has turned into a, a major debacle here. As you guys can see, we've been cranking and cranking, and this thing is just not starting. So we've come up with a theory here, and it seems to be the only logical explanation. So anyway, the exhaust gases from the pony motor all run up through this pipe, and then they run straight through the main intake for the diesel. And what we're theorizing here is the exhaust pipe should be separated in that intake, but it's clearly rusted through because we're getting exhaust from the pony coming up through the diesel exhaust. We pulled out this plug right here and you can clearly see it pushing out through there. So we're theorizing that the pony engine is keeping it from starting actually because it's cutting out all the oxygen and uh, kind of pressurizing the intake with exhaust gases. So we're gonna try and drop the intake here and get some fresh air to it.
don't know how well you guys can tell, but this thing is really loud without that uh, intake hooked up correctly. But it's running, and that's the important thing. So it's time to boogie on down the road with this bad boy.
Well, we got it down here. Even managed to find it a place under the roof here for now. And uh, we're gonna have to do some serious work because this thing is not capable of restarting without quite a bit of work here. But I've parked it so that I should be able to get in here and do the service that I need to do all under roof at least. I could put it inside the new shop, but uh, yeah, the first thing I pull in on that floor, I don't want to be a D8. <laughs> well, we're not gonna go so hard at first. Alrighty, would you look at that thing, huh? It just nestles ever so nicely under the lean-to there. We got uh, we got all of the clearance down here. I mean, there's so much extra room you can you can almost see it. <laughs> there's not much room at all on this side. I, I kept it as tight as I could so I can still get to my man door over here. And if I know myself like I know myself, this thing's going to be sitting here for a little while before it's uh, back in operation. So what I didn't show you guys before we got this thing on the trailer when we were still trying to get it running. Our hypothesis was correct. So the pony engine was actually flooding the diesel engine with exhaust gases, which was not giving it enough oxygen to uh, actually ignite the diesel fuel. So we loosened the intake all off there. That's what you saw hyperlapsed. We loosened up the intake and we actually pulled it back as much as we could and let it suck fresh air from out from around the manifold. And man, as soon as we did that, that thing fired right up. So the whole time we were running the pony motor, the actual motor, like it sounds punchy, it sounds like it's got some jam to it, but something sounded bad back in this uh, gearbox back here. This is what, that's, the pony motor actually stops right there, and the crankshaft comes out and there's a clutch in there, and there's a high and low gearbox, and then it goes into the bell housing for the diesel, and uh, you know, this all engages all that. Basically, Something had to grenade inside of this gearbox because it's actually cracked right there. I doubt you guys are going to be able to see. There's a crack in the casting right there now, which was not there at the beginning of the day. And uh, yeah, bad times. Bad, something bad happened in there. So uh, before we're able to run this thing again, we're going to have to actually pull that entire assembly off of the machine. And uh, we're going to have to have a look at it and see if it's repairable. If not, we're going to probably end up converting this to electric start because I actually prefer the Pony, even though they're sometimes finicky and hard to start. Um, the nice thing about a Pony is that you know that you're going to be able to get this thing running, except for today because the exhaust pipe was rotted out. But any other time, you would know for sure you're going to get the thing running because the Pony isn't going to burn up or wear down like a starter and some batteries. So there is some definite advantages to having a Pony motor on a big old... Big old diesels like this do not like the cold. So once we get this thing cleaned up and painted up and looking better and functioning better, one of the things I want to do in the restoration process is kind of pay some homage to the, uh, the company that bought this machine new. You can see that logo right down there on the nose. That S inside of a star. That stands for Stravagi Industries. That's a company in the town where I went to high school actually, weird in West Virginia. They used to do a lot of strip mining, and that's where this machine probably spent most of its days. They also have a concrete plant, and that is who brought the concrete for my floor in there. So what's the goal for this old girl? Well, I guess I'm going to end up restoring this thing. It's a pretty solid unit from what I can tell so far, aside from the pony motor. Uh, the diesel seems to run really good. doesn't have much blow-by, so that means it'll probably run for as long as I'm ever going to have it. I guess that the undercarriage is about 50%, and for as much as I'm going to run this tractor, uh, that, that'll last my lifetime and maybe some of my kids' lifetime, I would venture to say. But you never can be too certain about the future. I never thought that I'd be standing here next to a new building next to this pretty kitty cat, so I really don't know. Probably going to wind up doing a Christine level restoration on this thing. At least clean it up, make it all completely functional and presentable, and uh, that way we can actually take it out and do some jobs with it in the future here. I was kind of kicking around the idea of perhaps bidding and doing an entire job, a real paying job, with nothing but antique machinery, and uh, I think that would be a fun project for, uh, for YouTube. As you guys can tell, this is a big, big machine, so I couldn't have done it without the help of my friend Sam over there at Scrappy Industries and uh, the company I bought this thing from, Stravagi Industries. 
They are the same company that brought the concrete from my floor in there, and uh, they do lots of other things as well. They used this bad boy back in the day for uh, stripping coal, and I would guess probably pioneering and clearing land on those projects. I am told, I have not seen, but I am told that they actually have the, a, a twin sister to this machine here that is one serial number off. They bought both of them brand new off the line and they have one serial number different than this tractor. So that would be really cool to have someday, although I definitely don't have a need for two D8s. It's just the idea that I know where the, the twin to this one is is pretty cool. One thing nice about cable blades versus hydraulics is uh, you can leave the blade up in the air like this and unless you have things adjusted wrong it's not gonna ever come down unless you get up there and actually shove the lever which uh, should not happen. I'm gonna leave it in the up position in case I need to move this machine around since I can't start it I'm gonna have to, to tow it and uh, yeah that that'd be hard to do with the c-frame down on the ground. As always, guys, if you like this video, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a thing. If you want to help support the channel in another way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. Pick yourself up some sweet merchandise over there. We've got hats, t-shirts, koozies, hoodies, sweatshirts, all kind of goodies over there at the store. So you'll be helping support the channel and doing it in style. And last but certainly not least, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you on the next video.